So as Nina said, I'm going to be talking to you about crafting a winning portfolio. So what is your portfolio? Your portfolio is not just something where you can, you know, just use to show off or, you know, you know, get all the clients. I mean, that's part of the reason, you know, you can, but your portfolio is a is a display of your accomplishments through providing value to others. And that is something that you really have to remember um, no matter you know what field that you're in within design is that your primary job is to provide value to others. It's also a record of your challenges and your growth. As you progress through your career and you work on different projects and you do different things, your portfolio will show your growth, how you met different challenges, and how you succeeded. It is also your creative story and the mark that you have left within your niche in the design world. So now you're me asking, why do I need a portfolio anyway? You know, I got the skills from college. I'm going to have my degree to prove that I have the skills. Well, see, yes, that's true, but you know, your education is only providing you the skills. And it takes more than just skills to work in this industry. It takes experience. Um, another reason is that you need to tell people what you're passionate about. You don't want to end up working for a meat product uh, company as like a graphic designer if you're a vegan or you don't want people contacting you for you know type design if you're somebody who only does like print so you need to let people know what you're passionate about doing the second thing you need your portfolio to build your confidence. As you, again, as you work on different things, as you um, take on bigger challenges, you get to see like, hey, these are the things that I have done. These are the accomplishments I've achieved. And that confidence is what you'll use to end up pushing the boundaries of your skills and really doing awesome work. And this last one is really important, is securing better opportunities. One of the things is, is that you may find a, you know, a decent job, you know, after, you know, a couple of months or so of job searching, but, eventually it may be time for you to move on. And so when you go to secure better opportunities for yourself, you need to be able to show people, hey, this is what I've done before. And this is why I can serve you um, just as well or even better. So just keep those things in mind uh, while you're asking that question, why do I need a portfolio? So now we understand you know, why we need a portfolio, what should our portfolio contain? And your portfolio should contain, one, your due and value statement. And 
really that statement is to say, hey, this is, you know, what I do, who I do it for, and, you know, this is the value or the particular um, asset that I bring to the table. And that is important because people want to find somebody um, who meets their needs the best. Two, it should contain your proof of value slash experience. And that doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, I've worked here, I've worked here, but more so like your work, um, your accomplishments, you know, hey, I've done this for this person, I've done this for this person. It's a showcase of your abilities. And there are many ways that you can do that, you know, um, for students, um, especially, I think case studies are a great way. Um, sometimes um, you have something that you can link out to, and then that is something you can show. And there's just different ways to, you know, show the, the value that you bring, your experience. But the most important thing is, is that you not only show that, it's not about the quantity necessarily, but it is about the quality. So that doesn't mean you need a thousand things. You know, if you can show, you know, about three um, good examples of your work and, you know, the value that you provide, that's good enough. And actually, I would say that is the minimum of uh, portfolio items that you should have. Now, your portfolio, um, and this is for more so for people who have portfolio websites, are lead filters. Part of that is that do and value statement. You're telling people, hey, this is you know what I do, who I do it for. You also um, have things like your FAQ section. You know, um, there are certain questions that you can provide, you know, answers to, and then people will know, oh, well, I have this question, and, you know, based on those answers that you provide, they can kind of be like, oh, well, this person may not be um, good for me, or, hey, this person is great, you know, um, I, you know, like these answers and things like that. Um, so there's very um, good ways to, you know, filter out the leads that best suit you. And the last thing, since we're talking about it, is you, your personality. One thing is like people don't only hire you for, you know, your skills and your experience. People want to work with somebody that they like, that they can sort of relate to sometimes. And I think that having, you know, your personality show, whether it's in your work or rather than the language you use, um, if you have like a portfolio website, things like that, will help you kind of set yourself apart from other people that clients may be looking at. So allow me to show you some examples of people who do some of these or all of these things very well. The first example is Miss Grace Walker. She is a highly skilled web designer and developer. And you can obviously see that, you know, just by looking at her website, she already tells you like, hey, this is what I do. You know, my websites are visually stunning. They're technically sound. Those um, to some, you know, body who's looking for a website, those things are really important. And she's letting people know, hey, I do these things. And as you can see, 
you know, Grace has her work here right up front. She has a picture of herself, you know. Someone looks at her and they say, oh, you know, this seems like, you know, a really kind looking person. And so, you know, she doesn't have case studies, but she does have links to live projects. So people can go and click through um, any of these examples and see, you know, the quality of work that she has done. And more so of putting herself into these things, she's linking out to different things like she's spoken at WebflowConf, which is like a conference uh, every year that's held for Webflow. And from this, from her speaking, people can get an idea of like her real expertise, her personality. And so, you know, there are, again, more examples. Um, again, you don't need this many, but hey, if you got this many examples that are quality like she does, that's fine. You know, again, she's um, linking out to, you know, a, another interview. She's showing like some experiments. You know, one thing too that people like to see is versatility. So, you know, while you may be, you know, a print designer, but if you, you know, also, you know, design applications, you know, hey, put in, you know, a experiment section on your website or something like that. And just kind of show people that you have a diverse skill set because you can never know when that other skill set can either one, keep you in a secure job position or two, open you up to a wider range of opportunities. Now, going back to when I spoke earlier about proof of value and experience, client testimonials, those are very important. It comes with the concept of social proof. People want to see that other people trust you, that other people have good opinions of your work and of your person. And so if you have, you know, the chance, make sure you're collecting those testimonials as you're doing work for clients or, you know, have coworkers, you know, um, speak um, about your work ethic because when you're applying for jobs, references are a very big thing depending on where you apply. And so if hiring managers or whoever, you know, is above that hiring process can see that, hey, people who have worked with you um, for a bit uh, have good opinions of you and your work ethic, that just kind of moves you closer to that, you know, you're being hired. So that's um, one thing, you know, just to kind of keep in mind as well. And again, Grace has a little bit uh, more about herself on the bottom here. And she kind of goes a bit more into like who she, you know, works with. Again, let people know what you do and who you do it for. So this next person is another uh, Adobe ambassador, is one of my uh, best friends, is Miss Shine Webster. Her brand designed by Shine is a really good example of personality. From the language that she uses, you know, the way that, you know, she um, displays herself with photos, you can kind of already see her type of energy. Again, in speaking of about content, she's like, hey, this is um, who I am um, in terms of my brand. 
you know, and she talks about like, hey, her motivation, things like this. Um, if you're good at this, and again, uh, more so for people with portfolio websites, this will really help you connect with the people who would work well with you. And again, she's kind of telling AK, like, hey, this is what I do. She talks a little bit about, you know, her services. And another thing I want to highlight, if you are featured somewhere, um, you know, you have awards, things like that, let people know. Because um, for some people, that just makes you all the more credible or all the more valuable because they see like hey this person is you know really at the top of their game they're really making strides so shine and showcasing her work she does have case studies and you know they aren't these massive you know long-winded things but you know she shows her work she you know um, tells a little bit about, you know, the process and things like that. And that's what, you know, you need to do. Um, especially, you know, if you go the case study route, let people know, like, hey, this is what I've done. Here is the concepts that I come with, you know, process and the work and the results. All of those really come together to make a great case study and again for you those of you who are students especially you know those of you who don't have any like real work experience you know get those case studies done i know they can be tedious you know and they can be a little bit of work to put together but in the long run they will pay off for you and this the last one is one of my favorite creative directors in all the world, Mr. Jacelyn Tantan. He has just, uh, you know, an all around great portfolio. You know, he, now he doesn't have like, you know, a standard line, neither did the other two examples, but He's like, hey, I'm not only a designer, I'm a storyteller. You know, again, putting that personality, that character into um, what he's presenting to people. Again, he has an excerpt where he talks a little bit about himself and, you know, his experience doing some name dropping. And yeah, if you get like, you know, those bigger clients, definitely feel free to, you know, name drop, but do so um, appropriately. You know, don't, you know, share any details that uh, would be um, violating like any trade secrets or things like that. Now, going into his work, he does a really great job on his display he's these nice bold images that are quality and you know he makes use of things like mock-ups to kind of show how what he's designed would be used in real life and you can kind of see too um as we've gone through his website He's got these nice animations, you know, and it all goes to add to his presentation. So that is another thing that I want you to keep in mind is to really focus on that. Have a quality presentation. If you're doing these case studies, you know, if you're presenting yourself, you know, you really want to be able to show people that you know, you do this for real. So where can I showcase my work? 
Well, you have a few options. One, since you all there at uh, Ohio State get um, the Creative Cloud Suite for free, take advantage of that. You also have access to Behance. And, you know, if you're just getting started out, you know, you can go to Behance and, you know, upload your work. You know, you can still put together case studies. And the reason I like Behance is that you can do more than just you know, like upload images and text, excuse me. You can upload videos and people really like to see, um, you know, videos and animations and things because um, it's more interactive, it's more entertaining and people retain that in their memory better than if they just see like an image or some text. So Behance is a very great platform uh, for you guys to, you know, upload your work and kind of showcase what you do. Another reason why Behance is good because it's not only designers that are on here, it is people who are hiring so somebody can be going through and searching for a specific type of work and they can come across, you know, something you've done and, you know, they reach out to you if, you know, they feel like you can bring them some value. So definitely don't sleep on using Behance. Another platform which is kind of gated uh, for the moment is Dribble, And for some reason, we're having a bit of connection issue. Sorry about that. There we go. So Dribble is um, another platform. But like I said, it is gated. So you need an invite from somebody to say, hey, um, this person is good enough to be on a platform because Dribble has some is focused on really high quality work. So as you can see, you know you can uh, post like animated um, images, you can post videos and things like that. Um, you can do case studies as well, but um, it's just not as good as Behance would be, but if you get on Dribble, it's sort of like another leg up for you because again, it's just not designers on here. It is people who are looking for designers and the people that you would normally hear from as far as clients on Dribble, um, they are usually trying to hire somebody and they know they're going to be spending, you know, a, a bit of money for those of you who are going like the freelance route or even some of you who are looking for jobs. So just to keep that in mind, if you end up do getting on Dribble. So this last one, of course, we all know is Instagram. Everybody is on social media. Uh, social media is really big and you know on Instagram you can kind of upload little short animated things or you can just post quick shots of your work and people can find you through social media because often they will be kind of looking you know through something on their phone or they may actually be you know browsing on their computer for something and you know, they see, oh, this person does graphic design. This person does web design. Let me reach out to them. And so Instagram can be really good for um, getting a lot of eyes on your work and kind of, um, you know, getting you uh, some clients. So then what if I want something a little more professional? Again, 
since those of you at Ohio State have the Creative Crawl Out Suite for free, you can take advantage of Adobe Portfolio, which is one of the services offered with your subscription. And this is basically a platform that you can use to um, stand up your own website. So you get like, you know, a variety of templates that you can use and customize. Um, you can add pages to give more information about yourself. And then the best part about this is, is that you don't have to manually just re-upload your work from Behance because Adobe Portfolio will actually pull those in automatically for you. And then there you have, you know, your work showcase and, you know, you don't have to go through that strenuous process of re-uploading things. So um, another platform for those of you who want to do something a little more custom and you don't have a like technical skill level, but you do know how to kind of design websites is Framer. You know, you can do really awesome websites with animations and you can really let your creativity free without knowing how to code. And this is both a web app and a desktop app. And on top of that, it's not that um, expensive, um, especially, you know, if you just need either like, you know, a one pager or if you need, you know, something with like, you know, CMS, um, it's not that expensive. You can see it's, you know, $15 per month if you're paying uh, yearly. Now, this last one is Webflow. It's my um, personal tool of choice. It is a really powerful platform that allows you to use modern web technologies to build your website without knowing how to code. Now, the caveat to that is that you will have to learn about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript because Webflow follows the web standards for building a website. But if you're willing to put in that work and you know, you're willing to just learn a little bit here and there, you can really do some awesome things. And as you can see here, there are a lot of big name companies that trust Webflow for their website needs. So that was really quickly on some options that you can use to showcase your work. Now, what you choose depends on, you know, what you feel comfortable with or, you know, how you're trying to start out. Um, so, you know, if you have any questions about, you know, these platforms or what may be right for you, just kind of feel free to reach out and, and ask, um, you know, I or Nina would definitely be uh, glad to help you.